All right, well, that was nice. Um... <laughs> Raj, yeah, that's right, dude. Absolutely, man. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, they really did. All right, well, we're going to... Um... I mean, I don't think we're changing anything. This deck felt pretty nice. Uh, let's just run it back, I guess. Like I said, stream's going to end around 3 o'clock today, so we're probably not going to finish this league, but we'll just pick up on it tomorrow, uh, more than likely. I don't think I'll finish the league in two hours, although that one, I mean, only went two hours, 40 minutes, and that particular match went very long, so... All right, well, let's go. I guess real quick, before we hop in another league, should probably uh, promote my team a little bit here, especially with so many people viewing. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out today. Really appreciate it. Uh, <clears throat> if you are not already a member of our Swish Gaming Patreon, uh, that is an option. A dollar a month gets you access to deck lists that we're playing at upcoming events. Uh, Larry and Chris Smith both, both posted what they would play before... Uh, having really good weekends at the NRG this weekend. Larry with a top eight and a 6-2 in modern. So really, really good weekend for him. Had he been able to win the Pioneer event, he would have qualified for the uh, for the NRG championship. But no dice, unfortunately. Lost to Mono White in top eight. But either way, dollar a month gets you access to those. Five bucks a month gets you access to sideboard guides. Um, Chris Smith had a really good one on Yawgmoth that he wrote up last week. Um, but regardless if you're a patron or not, greatly appreciate everybody who's hanging out and watching the stream today. Thank you so much for supporting both myself and my team, the Swish Gaming. Thank you very much. All right, uh, let's get to it. I might be the only person on earth that says I have two. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's possible, man. I don't know. All right, we want another die roll. Oh, this, all right. We didn't have any of these in the first league. Any of these like one land hands. I think this hand sucks. I don't, I don't think keeping this makes sense. I have to cut myself off red mana too. There's like no way this is good. I'm going to mulligan this. We're going to be disciplined. All right, this hand is better. It's still, you know, lacking. I'm just going to get rid of the Ember Cleave for now. We need that. Let's go ahead and make a guy. Go ahead, opponent. Okay, we're playing Lotus again, it looks like. We beat it in the first league. Our hand was considerably better, though, when we played against it the first time, so a little worried about it this time. Bob and Cheese, thank you very much for the follow. Appreciate it, my friend. Um, all right, let's attack for one here. We're in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. I really need a land super badly. If we top deck a land, we can, like... Play the Lovestruck Beast, get a counter here. Pretty good combat, but Lotus matchup, probably bad, I agree, especially when we don't have like a, a quick aggressive hand. Um, yeah, that is not the turn we needed to draw you, although it does, I mean, get a counter on the, the Quirion guy, but we're in trouble. We are in trouble. It's going to be like a turn shy of where I need to be, probably. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Actually, we might be in okay shape because they kind of need that Thespian stage to copy before we die. Uh, I think I'm just like, going to cast a Lovestruck, trigger, attack for five, and then we just have a lethal attack next turn. So here it is. I don't know. That's uh, what we're going to do. What set is the two drop from? Yeah, it's from the newest set. Query and B Scholar is pretty sick. Hasn't really had a lot of popularity in either Standard or Pioneer yet. Nor will it ever, probably. I mean, this is, you know, it's a, it's a good deck. I, I think it's certainly you know, playable. I don't know that's one of the best things you can do in Pioneer. I wouldn't go that far, but it, it does feel pretty good. 
Okay, they're impulsing. That is actually, like, a really good sign. So, well, I think we have to dodge, like, Arboreal Grazing? I mean, that ain't it, right? Vizier? Oh, they're cycling Vizier. That could be bad. Okay, yeah, 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 okay. Still, still in danger. I'm still in danger. Potentially. Hardcast Vizier, Shimmer. I don't know that they can beat me with one blue mana. They cannot. All right, well, we take down Lotus in game one yet again. Thank God we're winning die rolls. If you're losing die rolls, this matchup's a lot harder. But I think last time we cut out an ooze for that, and that was all we did. And I think I'm still pretty happy with that. So let's do that. Yeah, not in danger anymore. You're not wrong. Not in danger at all. Wild times. Yeah, I mean, I don't think the deck's, like, terrible, but... Three Liberator seems good to get Knight on turn three. You bring in three? I don't know that I want three. I'm pretty happy with everything else in my deck. I guess I could see, like, maybe trimming Coco's, because we don't necessarily have time for Coco, but I still think Coco's just, like, very powerful, so... Yeah, I don't know. Crusher seems bad. That is true, I guess. All right, we could try trimming Crusher maybe next game. Could buy that. Certainly buy that. Um, well, that's a mulligan. Unfortunate. All right, well, this is a keep. I think I just get rid of the Carplusion Forest. Carplusion might be better than Crag Crown, but I don't think so. No, I, I... I could be really aggressive here. Because my life total doesn't matter at all, there's some amount of argument to actually just bottom the lair so I have double red if I top deck Ember Cleave. It's like kind of interesting. Might be playing a little too aggressively to the Ember Cleave. We only play two, but like Cleave is is a big proponent of winning this matchup, I think. So Yeah, that, that is true, Bob and Cheese. Yeah, alright. We're gonna we're gonna go with that. We'll see how this goes. They like playing to the cards that are just like how we win. Which is certainly Ember Cleave, so. Well, no Arboreal Grazer's big. That's what we were afraid of. Now, in theory, I could do this, but my life total still doesn't matter that much. I don't think any of it really matters. I'm just going to, I guess... I'm just going to play this. I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's really relevant. I'm probably just wasting time thinking about it, but here we are. Next turn, I can go Beast Call or Llanowar Elves. Seems good. Yep. Oh, that's actually kind of good against Thespian Stage, funny enough. Um, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, doesn't really matter which one, but uh, I think I very safely can play this on red now. Just like do this. Uh, play it on red. Play this. Like so. And then play this. Next turn we can cast a Bone Crusher.
thespian stage. Okay. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I wonder if I just like attack all here and see if they let me stomp their guy down. I, I kind of like being able to stomp their guy, to be honest. God, the thespian stage is going to be able to copy, too. It's like pretty brutal. I'm in a lot of danger. I really am. Um, I guess the play... Maybe the play is just like, play this, cast Bone Crusher, leave up the Seiju for when they try to Thespian Stage. Blow up their Thespian Stage. And the next turn I can threaten the Stomp. It's like attack all, Stomp. I Kind of, kind of like that, I guess. Okay, um, so let's do this then. Let's play this, cast this. Unfortunate that I have two of these, so they like know that Stomp is still in my deck, but whatever. Here comes the Lotus. I assume anyway. They have a Lotus here. Yeah, there it is. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Get out of here with that, please. What does that do? <laughs> yeah, I think they're figuring out too. Like, what? All right. What's going on? I don't know. Let's draw an Ember Cleave, folks. Please. I, I don't know. I don't know what that was. That was just heinous. <laughs> it's about as bad as it gets. All right. Well, it was not amazing, but I mean, it's, you know, more pressure, I guess. So. Uh, cast. 5, 9, 11. I can put them to 2 if I hold up the stomp. I guess I just play my whole board. I mean, it's... The nice thing is I beat Anger of the Gods because I have a 6-6, six, six, so... Gotta be a little better than that. But they... I mean, they do just, like, have 7 mana, so this is, like, not... I by no means have won this game yet. Uh, they can't get stage off off of Beseju, but I mean you're still right. It was a wildly bad. It was a terrible play. I mean, no one's arguing that. Okay. Well, here comes an ultimatum. Yeah, the, I mean, the cleave board wipe, they could have had black and white, so it actually would have gotten us. It's just six mana kill everything, but we'll see what they go get. Um, I don't know if they have a deterministic kill here, but we're probably going to have to give them an omniscience and like pray that they don't have a good hand, I think. A lot of times what you have to do against this deck when they're comboing off is just like give them the omniscience and pray. We'll see what they get. I'm sure there might be a pile that just beats me, but. We did our best. Well, I don't care about Liar at all. I think I certainly let them have Liar. And I let them have Behold, right? They only have a black floating. This is a tutor. It doesn't give them any mana. They've already... They've already played their land. I think they're just dead. If I just give them Liar Behold, what do they do? They die, right? 
So put a card back into their library. We just put the poor back. I feel like this guy played terribly. There's no way that's the right pile. Unless I'm missing something, but I, I'm pretty sure they played their land. I think they've just killed themselves. Omniscience, that's fair, yeah. Yeah, maybe not. I don't, I don't know, yeah. I guess if Omniscience is in their hand, that's certainly the case. No, it was two hidden stirrings. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, I feel like they're not winning from this spot, though. Unless they have a dark ritual that I don't know about. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, I mean, who knows? Maybe they just, I guess they needed me to make a mistake, which we did not do. All right, uh, cool. Six and zero with this deck today. Deck's honestly been pretty impressive. This has been a really fun one to play. <clears throat> Winning a lot of die rolls too. It's it's been uh, pretty pretty good. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna keep it, but this is not a very exciting hand, but I, I mean, I'm going to keep it. We're going to hope. We're going to hope that they don't interact with my elf and that we just like Coco on three, Coco on four into goodness, but yeah, you know, we'll see what happens. Somebody's going to be playing black red. Eventually we've somehow dodged black red all day long. Okay. It looks like mono green. Yeah, mono green. Almost certainly. I can't imagine we're, uh, we're playing a mirror match. Ronus, very good draw. Very, very good draw. Uh, let's just get the Ronus out there. One of the better draws in the deck, to be honest. Can cannot imagine too many better draws there, to be honest. Pretty pretty happy with that. Exterminate Coco main phase and try to hit some big boys and get to work. Old growth troll. Maybe a Kiora, but probably an old growth troll. And there it is, the old GT. That's kind of gas. Um, not particularly right now. I mean, I, I like... I could just, like, play it and kill their elf to cut them off mana. It's like somewhat interesting, but I, I think that's much worse than a collected company. Ember Cleave on Ronus is completely busted, by the way. 6-6 six, six, double striking death touch trampler means that my opponent's just like going to take 11 damage um, whenever that situation arises. I think we're just, we're just trying to kill this guy. Let, let's just not. I'm not going to play around. Let's just see what we can hit here. Alright, well, very good hits. Very, very good hits. Combat, five. 
I don't love giving him mana, but I think we kind of just need to here, so. So, best draw next turns like another land. Get the mammoth figure, probably. It's likely. Hold on, just like has to block here. I can't imagine you take this. I don't know, but you're trying to set up double OGT, I guess. Okay, they take five. Really, you think, oh, 0% no block is right. Yeah, I agree. Maybe they don't have Cavalier in their hand or something, but like still, I feel like they're supposed to ramp themselves there. It's taking a five ball to the face is uh, pretty, pretty bad news for them, I think. Sure, you got a Haven. Oath of Nyssa, sure. <clears throat> Ember Cleave has been really impressive in this deck. Maybe you're on to something, Mac. Maybe Cleave's actually just good. <laughs> yeah. I know you play it in Mono Red all the time. Obviously, I'm not a fan of it in Mono Red, but... Pretty sure there's dead. I yeah, they have colorless mana open. Just attack with these three, Ember Cleave, wherever, and kill them. Cleaving an annex. Yeah, I mean cleaving an annex is obviously very good. Okay. Well we didn't need that, but it doesn't matter. Combat. Should have attacked with the elf too. It's just spewing off, but whatever. Whatever, it does not matter. Believe in the cleave, folks. Just keeps killing people today. All right, well, that was nice. Um, this matchup seems pretty bad. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Outland Liberator is probably good. He's going to blow up, like, Oath, blow up Wolf Willow Haven. Uh, Domri's Ambush, certainly solid. Scavenging Ooze might be good enough to, like, eat Storm the Festivals and things. Query and Beast Caller seems pretty pretty mid, mid, mid to me, medium. It does. Yeah, that's actually a big deal. All right, let's get more oozes in here and we'll figure out what we're supposed to cut. Domri Raid. Domri Raid's fight is actually like kind of interesting. I like it a lot more on the play. Sorry, Raja, but I'm adding a cleave to this deck. That's fair, Mac. I mean, you could probably pretty safely cut the Domri, right? That's certainly our flex slot, but it's more... This is really good against Red Black, so... Could trim Aronis, I guess, too. They do similar things, kind of. Kind of. Pride is the Domri, but... Um, anyway... Said. I think I'm going to cut the Domri, being that I'm on the draw. On the play, I could buy this more. The question is, what comes out next? Stormseeker gives me some speed, but honestly, like, it's not that good. Right? It's, it's bodies kind of, kind of medium. Haste, like, matters, but doesn't matter that much. I kind of think I'm going to trim two of these. I think that makes the most sense to me. Bones are obviously great. Love Struck's quite good. Ronus is, is very good as well. So I, I think this is where I'm going to go with this. Oh, god dang it. I should have brought in Rage. Forgot we had Reckless Rage. Uh, I mean, this hand is still good, so I'm going to keep this. But Reckless Rage is certainly desirable in this matchup.
Right, well, they didn't have a turn one play, so that's pretty dang good. Uh, we've got double red now, so this can come down on green easily. So let's do that. Play this. Heart's Desire. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, I think I'm going to, like... I'm going to play the head game here and certainly going to attack. I'm going to shock this in. But we'll see if they play afraid of anything. Get a free damage here. Yeah, the, the benefits of playing a deck that no one has any idea what you're doing. Just, opponents just terrified of the block. So we'll take that free point of damage to the bank. Play this, go. Dimer's Ambush can fight walkers too which is pretty hot so like if they do like play a Karn here and go get boat I can just Domri's ambush the pack leader and then kill the Karn and then it doesn't die to the boat it's kind of cool not what I'd like to be doing with my turn but something I could do with my turn I suppose we could do if they if they do have Karn and go get Bode. I mean, I can just attack the Karn and just play a Love Struck Beast. That's not awful either. We'll see what they do. It's not really something I'm terribly concerned about yet. <clears throat> Kiora. If they play Kiora here, I think I'm very aggressively just going to kill this Kiora and not allow them to have this. So we can just, like like I said, we can Dombri's Ambush, fight the walker. Oh, they have an elf. Ah. A little bit annoying, but... Okay. Um... so close. I guess, like, killing the elf is effectively the same thing as killing the Kiora. They're probably just Domri's ambush. Kill the elf. Attack the Kiora for five, and then, you know, if they want the mana out of the Kiora, it has to die. No way he blocks anyway. I mean, that is true. The awkward thing about Kiora to one is, like, it still just sits there and draws him cards, which I kind of hate. Like, if he's going to play a Cavalier, I'd like him to just not draw cards off it. Hmm. So I think ambushing Kiora actually might be the smartest thing to do. And then just make another 1-1. One, one. I guess that's probably what we're going to do. And then we have Ooze to eat anything they mill off the Cavalier. So I, I am, I'm going to send both. Um, just going to see what they do, I guess. Maybe they're completely ridiculous and block with the Elf, and then I just get to kill everything. No blocks, yeah. Good, good prediction there. Okay. Shock this in. Make an a human. 
And then I am, I'm going to go with the kill Kiora line. I, I just don't want my opponent to draw cards off their big things. And I believe I'm going to target the pack leader still. Although targeting a 1-1 is like kind of interesting. But this actually pushes pack leader through Cavalier if I give it Trample later. So... I mean, this is, like, really solid for me. Feels like they have a Storm the Festival in their hand, but now I just, like, get to attack with all this draw card. Going to pressure the Karn down, I think. Pressure the... The, uh, the pack leader is going to go at the Karn, and the others go at him. And give the pack leader trample if I'd like. Just kill the Karn regardless if they block. I can't imagine they're going to block anyway, but... Who knows? Ratchet bomb. Ratchet bomb on zero. Okay. I don't care. That's fine. Not the best draw in the world, but acceptable. Uh, okay. Well, we're going to play the Carplusion Forest. And we're going to send the 1-1s one at him and the pack leader at the card. Opponent 100% has a storm the festival in their hand. No question about it at all. But that is what it is. Reason I played the untapped land first, I like, kind of forced to. So those both at him, that there. If I want, I guarantee that I can kill the Karn. I like doing this. He only has two cards in hand. One's a Ratchet Bomb. Obviously. Okay, that was a really good draw because it lets me deploy Ronus plus Elf now. Running well, for sure. Okay. This and Ronus. It's a lot of pressure on our opponent. Like I said, here they're almost certainly going to storm us, which is fine. Other cards, Ratchet Bomb. Okay, that is not a storm the festival. I'm not that concerned about that, to be honest. <clears throat> Kiora. Sure, you got a Kiora again. We'll be attacking and killing that if you play it, so works for me. Putting our opponent in a real bind right now. This is pretty nice. Hard to be upset about the position we are in at the moment. Land War Elf is another 1 1, so the Love Struck Beasts, like very real attackers again. Next turn, depending on what my opponent does, I can just like, go attack, Werewolf attack, Ronus, draw a card, and just play two 5 fives that can both rumble on the following turn. Fine with me. I, I'm certainly killing the Hyora. I'm just not going to let them spiral. I'm not going to let them have resources. Um, so, pretty... Ooh, that's a nice potential draw, too, to be honest. Um, Alright, well, the first thing is first. I'm just going to shock. And I'm going to attack with everything that isn't the elf. Kiora, Kiora. Uh, I mean, 
they can like they can block the Ronus. So I guess I probably send. I mean, it doesn't really matter where these go, but these are also going to go at Kiora. Everything's just going at Kiora. Just do what you will. Draw card. Okay. Why are people playing Ratchet Bomb? I could not tell you. Just have the option, I guess? I don't know. Okay, and now I'm going to play two Lovestruck Beasts. Now next turn, I can just like give everybody you know trample. So this is a uh, not a good spot for my opponent at all. Even if they hit a cavalier, we just like have an ooze, so they're never flashing back storms ever. Whatever they try to buy back, I can just eat. I feel like we're in really, really, really good position, and we're drawing two cards a turn as well. So opponent decides to do nothing with ratchet bomb. Did not pop it, nor did they. Sure. So what, I mean, they have to, like, Pithing Needle the Ronus here, right? That's, like, your only play. Can't let me get Trample on everything. Maybe there's something better. I guess... Karn Skrylix or whatever would be, like, pretty annoying, but he has to tap out to play it, and then he dies, so... Not super worried about that yet. I believe it enters tapped, so you can't use it on the first turn, if I remember correctly. Not even sure if Pioneer builds are playing that card, but they certainly could be. Sky Sovereign. Yeah, that one ain't doing it here at all. I'm just gonna swing for the fences now. I don't think I really care about Karn. He can, like, Meteor Golem me next turn, but I, I don't think Karn matters at all. There's going all in here. He can, like, block here, block two of these. I give him both trample. He's in huge trouble. He has to, like, lose all his mana, too. I'm just going to shock this in, and to the fence as we go. Uh, do I send my Llanowar Elves? Honestly, probably. Just send everything. All of you. opponent dies and doesn't know how. Yeah, it's possible. It's certainly possible. <laughs> they're cer yeah, I was like, they're certainly dying with that block. Um, so if I give... I mean, they're just dead. They're totally dead. What is this block? I mean, I don't know that they had a good block, to be honest, but... Mac, yeah, it's true. <laughs> uh, that's great. All right, we'll kill you. <clears throat> All right, well, Ronus does it again. Trample does it again. Deck's pretty sweet. <laughs> Been really, uh, really crushing today. Seven and zero. Oh, it's a pretty, pretty nice clip to be running at. But we also just continue to win die rolls. It's also very helpful. I'm not going to... Right, this hand's good. We're going to keep. Oh, nice. It's uh, McVetty. Very cool. Well, we know McVetty is going to know how my cards work. McVetty knows how to play magic, so this should be interesting. Probably, I wonder if he's playing the hardened skills deck. That We'll see. He's either on humans or like a scales variation. Oh, he's on spirits. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Not a very good draw there. It's a little unfortunate for me. Um, 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 let's play this on red, I think. And 
we'll attack for one, obviously. If he wants to trade, good for good for me, I guess. But I highly doubt that's going to happen. Uh, yep, yeah, that's fine. Could just go for the stomp on his guy, but I, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think he's going to like pass the turn and go ahead. Guess I just do nothing with my two mana here. I think I want to keep the Bone Crusher. I'm just going to play a Love Struck Beast this turn. Yeah. Love Struck Beast, please. That would have been really good last turn. Unlucky. All right. Well, uh, I don't really have anything with Flash here that I would particularly care about. So I play this on green. Combat. I guess killing the Wanderer would have allowed me to resolve a collected company, so maybe I was actually just supposed to use the Bone Crusher. Oh well, we're here now. But in hindsight, I think it was actually incorrect. Go. Yep. Figured that was probably going to happen there. It's fine. I think we can theory race. This is one of the reasons I held the Bone Crusher is to just like have pressure. Okay. All right. Well, he's missing lands, so that's big for me. Now I can go stomp your rattle chains. I don't really want to take damage, so I think I'm actually just going to play this. Rumbling in with big guys. It's a good way to win. If he misses a land here, he's in big trouble. That's not good for me at all. That is not good for me at all. Really wanted to dodge that. I feel like we're going to get Apparitioned here. Either that or Eagle. It's either going to be Eagle or Apparition this turn. I appreciate the Grinder and McBetty playing a match on lunch. Yeah, that's fair. Wow. Main deck and Catilda? That's kind of gross. It's like really bad for me. I didn't even know they main decked this card. Disgusting. All right. Uh, just like attack with both, right? Draw a card. Gotta be right. I can like pump the werewolf pack leader, so it has to be my play. I'm in a lot of trouble. Uh, Lord's gonna kill me. A lot of things are gonna kill me here. Tildo is not ideal. That is not it at all. Um, I do have ooze eat. Is that? Probably doesn't beat a lord though, right? A lord is four, five, six, a billion on that, so. Yeah, like I said, I really just needed him to miss another land. He did not. Maybe I had to, like, Coco there. I'm trying to think of what I could hit off Coco. Yeah, that, that is what I was supposed to do. I, I just came to that conclusion as well, Mac. Let's see if he would have sacked his guy. We don't have anything with Reach. I guess I just, like, play the Lair, pass turn. We Coco. And we hope it's good enough. But yeah, main phase one Coco is the right play. We could have hit the haste guys, I guess. I don't know if that even really wins the game, though, because then we can't...
attack with... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know how I necessarily win there, but... Doing that was probably not right. Whatever. Here we are. Probably Mac, but then we would have that rattle chains in play still, right? So I don't, I don't necessarily know that that's true. Maybe you're right though. I mean, it it, it was bad. It was bad. I, I should have done it for sure. Well, I mean, it would be hitting us right now, right? It's so like last turn we would have taken four, and then we'd be taking at least three here. All right, I mean, I'm going to Coco right now if he wants to. The bad thing is if he has a Queller. I still think I just need to do this, though. Because if he has to sack this, he loses. Huh. He loses a power toughness on this. I'm really worried about the, the Queller, though. The Queller in particular is, is a huge deal, but I, I think you just like, need to make him have it. I don't know. Zank could just be flush full of collected companies himself. I don't know. I'm gonna do this. I assume I'm gonna get quelled. But we'll see. No, I don't think I can, so. Yeah. Okay. It's uh annoying, but Ronus, I guess, kind of makes things interesting. Probably not good enough, but certainly interesting. Play the Ronus, attack both, make him figure out blocks. I mean, that's all I got. Oh, I mean, yeah, I should have left up double red. You're right, but. Seiju doesn't really do anything. Yeah. I mean, he would not have blocked around Cleave. I promise you that. Because that's not playing to win, right? I mean, he's just dead to Cleave anyway. If I have Cleave, he dies. So, Blocking there can give it trample. It doesn't kill him. Playing this... Technically keeps me alive if he doesn't have anything. I guess we just go to damage and then I play ooze. It's part of the reason I tapped the way I did is because I knew we had ooze post combat. Like, what am I talking about? I'm so dead. Never mind. I'm totally dead. All right. Uh. Well. We have some good tools here for sure. It's bringing all this stuff. <clears throat> I think Love Struck Beast is what we cut last time. I'm still pretty happy with cutting it. Yeah, I mean, McVetty's side, I feel like was. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like once he hit that land, I was screwed. The main deck at Tilda is like really disgusting too. I do not think that's common at all. Those are usually out of the board, right? But those are uh, really, really bad for me. What was the last cut last time? Is it a Ronus? Maybe a Ronus. I feel like I'm getting low on the creature count, though. 
Trimming a cleave is probably wrong. I don't think ooze is particularly good. I could see just cutting that, to be honest. Even though, obviously, it's like pretty good against Katilda, but... Pretty happy with all these cards, I think. Liberator's interesting, too, if we're worried about Katilda, but... So maybe we do want all the oozes then? Maybe like no cleave, no roam. That, uh, I don't know. I feel like big, like I don't need to get my things trampled to really win, right? Like big beaters are just good enough against this deck. So maybe the right play is just like cut these things and bring all the oozes in then? I don't know. I, I'm worried that ooze is just not very good though. Like the, the games where they don't have that, it's just, we do have a pretty good amount of removal, I guess. So it's like fine. I don't know. I think it's either cut Ronus and Cleave and bring in the oozes or just don't play ooze. That is my inclination. I feel like I'm supposed to play Cleave. Cleave just seems pretty good against them. Ronus seems fine against them too. I, I think they don't have that much removal. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. That is not it. That is not a good hand. I'm gonna mulligan that. Okay, this is a good hand. I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna get rid of the Carplusion Four. Actually. Do I get rid of the lair so I have a second red? I probably have to get rid of the lair so I have two red. This has to be the lair. Because I definitely want to cleave this game. Very much a game I want to cleave in. So I think that's going to be the, the pick for me. Uh, shock. Lanowar Elves. gonna make him play it at my pace make him never leave spells up basically Oh, because he wants to tap. I see. Okay. Tap my elf. Okay. Good play. Heads up play from him. Ooh, that's a nice draw. Um, hmm. I guess I just combat and then pass, flip this, so we make it nighttime, and then I can stomp on his turn. Seems good to me. I'm going to try to stomp the Shacklegeist. He will counter it, presumably. <clears throat> yep. He's probably going to make the same play again, I would imagine. Yep.
That's kind of... So I can... I can actually go Elf, give it haste, play Beast Caller, and just get on the board. But then I flip this back. Seems probably bad. So just five him. Fiving him is good, obviously, but... Five him and then just, like, play a Beast Caller and keep getting pressure. I guess, like, just still getting pressure is, like, probably reasonable. So the more pressure we apply, the more likely it is we can cleave him later. I think I'm just going to go with the, the Query and Beast Caller. Let's just keep getting threats in. Okay. Attacks. So, Coco, what does this mean? What in the world does this mean? Spell Queller? I mean, it's, it's got to be a, a Queller here, right? I have to imagine. It's just like cast an Elvish Mystic off of this, and then that's what I'm going to do. I mean, play this. This Queller will be at 3 4. Huh. I'm pretty interested, I guess, in just pumping this and attacking with just this and not even letting him convert on the Queller. I guess I could pump this and send both. Pumping this, sending both, means I get a counter, right? And then this gets trample. Trigger on 3-3. Three, three, attack both. Yeah, I think that is the right play. Blocks there, takes five. I think I just finished this off with the stomp. That's definitely what I'm going to do. Let's just get this off the board. It is awkward that the, the Storm Seeker got flipped there, but he has to play a spell on his own turn, and I'm just like trying to leave anyway there's like could leaving the queller leaving the queller in play could definitely be problematic like him getting a fourth okay so he must be stuck on coco's obviously i mean we didn't really see a reason to want the oozes at all Other than the fact it just like keeps me lower. I really do wonder if the cleaves are supposed to go on the draw. This might be a little too slow. They like tap things. They, they make it hard to assemble this. We can't Coco into it. I guess I can see the argument for Coco's going too. Because they get countered by Wanderer. It's a little wild. But like Coco is not... Very good against Spell Queller or Wanderer. Yeah, I agree, Mac. It does. What do you? What are the the thoughts of maybe cutting Collected Company? I mean, that's like got to be wrong, right? Cutting Collected Company is just got to be ridiculous. It's just like such a powerful card, but it's like. They have to respect Cleveland. That is true. 
Can we, like, trim Coco? Is trimming Coco ever right? Or is that just wrong, too? Anyways, do this. I just, like, I'm very concerned about only 26 creatures. And I kind of wouldn't hate a couple oozes. Like, be a little lower to the ground. Maybe I just need a mulligan to an elf or something. It is, yeah. All right, whatever. I think we'll just resubmit then. Probably getting a little too fancy. Just got pick five Raven Man on Moto. Jeez. Oh, yeah, I mean, we're going to keep this. I don't love it, but I also don't hate it, right? I mean, we get to play this on one, this on two, and we have a Rending Volley, so... We need to top deck fairly well, but our opener is very good, so not upset about this. This card is, like, surprisingly good in Pioneer. It, like, shouldn't be that surprising. This card was dominant in Standard. And typically, that's just a good pattern for being good in Pioneer, but All right, he's on a mulligan. It's uh, maybe good for us. Let's see. I'm leading on a white source. I feel like there's a portable hole. That was a really good draw. It deals with a portable hole that I think he probably has in his hand. Who knows? Find out soon. Okay. I'm just going to slam a Storm Seeker. There's not been good draws at all. Play it on this side. Let's play it there. Hopefully he does not have Lofty Denial. All right. No Lofty Denial for him. Gonna flash in a rattle chains. Yep, there it is. Rattling, rattling. <clears throat> yep. Ah, oh, that's pretty enough. Wait, really? Hits my elf. I guess he's worried about Collected Company. <laughs> Little does he know I have no spells in my hand. Uh... Huh. Had a really annoying game. I <laughs> just haven't drawn a spell. I didn't think it was a good keep, but getting real punished right now. Um... Don't really need to play an untapped land, right? I guess it does let me have to sage you up. Plus rending volley, the sage you plus volley. I don't know that really matters, but um, I'm just gonna play this. I don't think it's a huge deal. Combat. Gonna let him hit me. He is missing green mana here, which is huge. Okay. Oh, that's a really good draw. It's a really good draw. Um, all right, I'm gonna play this on red. Combat. Idea. Go. I'll respond. Oh, okay. Uh, huh. They just have to Coco here, right? I don't think I can die. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll be able to block the one on the ground. So, I really just want pressure. Could I guess just like rending volley the eagle though? I don't I don't hate rending volleying the eagle. It's not terrible. It's a tough call, man. Tough call. 
Rending Volley is like a pretty safe play. He like attacks me for... Coco seems solid. I know it's solid. It's just like, is it better than the Volley? It's more mana efficient, so probably, but... Alright, that was really, really good. Go. Yeah, I mean, the problem... The problem is once we, like, allow this in, it means now he's just going to be able to, like, protect it with other things, but... All right. We'll see how he plays this. He did double spell there. That's pretty bad for me. Double spelling there is disgusting, honestly. Gets to crunch me for seven in the air. God, the double spell there, man. It's just like so bad for me. Three blocks. Ugh. We're obviously going to play land. It's going to be an untapped one. I mean, I just have to rep being able to... God, give it... Uh, God dang it, man. I think I just need to draw a cleave is honestly what needs to happen. I always go to combat, target this, attack all, draw a card, see what we draw. If I need to do this, I will. And so Maybe I was supposed to play the Confluence? I don't know. Confluence... May have been better because then it would have let me vol. But if I hit a cleave, they're dead. He's just completely dead if I hit cleave. There's no way he can beat it. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. This is correct, though. Does Volley on Sky... Uh, pretty sure the answer to that is no. But that was something with the man land swinging out. I don't think so, right? Because then I, then I can't give this trample. This is a 2-3. No, I, I, don't, I don't think that would have done it. But it, that's interesting, though. I mean, he could have gone... Had we done that, he would have gone what? Block, block, you would have taken... This has been a 2-2, two, two, two power. Yeah, he, he would go to one, I believe. Uh, I think I just allow him to make blocks. Need to specifically dodge another lord. He has to block two things, right? So we'll see what happens. Block, block. Oh, this is really good for me. Now I just kill the eagle. I think we're going to win the game. Now I just kill his eagle. And I can still pump here too, but that is cracked. <clears throat> that may have been a mistake from him uh, I don't know though I'm not going to say Max made a mistake he's a pretty damn good player but I don't know that this was a, a good block we'll see uh, So I, I guess we just go to damage there's no reason to do anything else now we get a 1-1 one, one. 
He has no lords. Even another lord is short of, of lethal here. He would need... So he pretty much needs to Coco me to win. Um, I probably... Yeah, I should have pumped my werewolf. That was stupid. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, Mac. I was too busy focusing on other stuff. But yes, we should have pumped. Because now I, like, die to breeding pool. When I, like, shouldn't. Alright, well, we got him anyway. But yes, I should have pumped. That was terrible. Alright. That was a classic 8-0 with this deck today. Eight zero with this deck today. Pretty, uh, pretty nice. Pretty nice. Red green just getting it done for us. All right, we lost to die roll. Unfortunate. All right. Uh, no red mana is like really sad, but I actually think this hand's a keep. I'm gonna keep it. This hand has a lot of action. It does have two lands, so. Agent Orange, I'm not sure if it's going to be on the bot at the moment, but you can. there should be a cardboard live in the left side of your screen that should give the deck list. So they're probably playing Grease Fang with this lead. Very likely. They're currently 2-0 in a league as well. So let's do this. Hope they don't kill me on turn three. Yep, it's Grease Fang. All right. With a Bloom Command would have been... Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> it's always, man. This deck is so tilting. It's a Grease Fang deck. All right, well, let's uh, do this. Let's make an idiot. What in the world? Add a mana. Do this. Do this. And go. Okay. Okay. That's certainly beatable. I'm just going to... They had ditched the Ember Cleave here, right? I'm nowhere near casting it, so... A little sad that I have to show this to him, but... Fine with this. <laughs> Excuse me. Ugh. Ooh, I actually think I'm going to go Beast Call or Love Struck here. Most mana efficient. Gets a lot of power in play. Seems good. little awkward i mean coco is just like potentially so powerful hmm. it's actually supposed to be coco possibly i should have held the land too to be honest if i'm not gonna because discarding a coco to the lily really sucks but i don't know beast caller love struck is is pretty pretty gas but i guess i just pitch this right we, we don't need to play this we just like collected company twice it probably in the long run is going to put a lot more pressure into play. A lot more power, a lot more dangerous. I like that this just threatens the Liliana, though. I will say that much. But I think I like getting to cast both my collected companies. So let's just Coco. Uh, it, there's certainly an argument that this is not correct, but... All right, well... Um, 
guess I target the human token, funny enough, and we just send the human at Liliana. Makes some amount of sense. Or I could... I really don't like trading the Bone Crusher with the Rafine's Informant, especially not this turn, but I mean, maybe I'm supposed to, I don't know. Hmm. Tough. Tough, tough, tough. That's one option I have is just like target this and both the Liliana. Possible. Oh. <sighs> This at Liliana, this at you, I guess. That, I think that's what I'm going to do. This at Liliana, this at you. Got to get the get the Rafines of Foreman out of here at some point anyway. So let's get the damage. I'm going to have the Liliana, I think. Which player discards? Sure. Chariot. Yep. Okay. It's awkward. Can't cast that. Very awkward. Uh, and like, play Lovestruck, give it haste, attack Liliana. That seems pretty reasonable to me. He doesn't really have a very good block, no matter what he does. get this sinking thing off the table, which I, I think I'm a fan of, to be completely honest. So... Or he just chumps. Either way, like, all of it's fine for me. <clears throat> Go with the Lily. I think that's the only thing I'm going to attack here with see what he does keeps the lily in play sure all right well need his top decks to be medium but if they are we're in good shape yeah, i was never beating that anyway so not not even gonna act like i was I cannot beat it i'm just not gonna give more information we lost that's fine pretty annoying Love this deck. Yeah, dude. Me too, dude. Grease Fang's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Whatever, though. We got a lot of good tools. Beat it once today already. Let's see if we can do it again. Bone Crusher Giant is terrible. Domery is terrible. Um, I think last time, if I remember correctly, I cut Beast Callers. I think it's the worst two drop. I do not want Ferrix. Don't, don't. Oh, because they are a Liliana deck. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I, I just, like, we have so many other cards I'm trying to bring in. I, and I, like, need to be able to cast Collected Company and Ember Cleave in this matchup. So I, I don't think so. I know Cleave comes out against Rakdos. So, like, it makes a lot more sense against normal Rakdos. But, like, I'm not afraid of their Liliana game plan. I'm afraid of their combo. Yes, I believe so, Mac. And maybe that blue-black mid-range deck that you've been playing, but not many other decks, I don't think. What did we cut last time? Was it like two Lovestrucks? It may have been two Lovestrucks. I think I certainly want these. I'm pretty sure I want the Trample. That's fair, Mac. <laughs> that is fair. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think this is close to right. Not certain that cutting love strucks are correct, but like, I don't think there's any world where I'm supposed to be cutting storm seekers in a matchup where I want to be quick. It tramples relevant, so possible I could trim on elves, but I don't think I want to do that on the play or draw. I think just exploding is important. Well, I would play first. I would. Oh, God, that hand is not good. I need to mull that. That's not... 
That's not going to win a game, that's for sure. This one can get it done. Um, huh. Which card do we bottom here? It's either the Coco... Coco, the the Storm Seeker, or the Rage. In my opinion, could be like uber greedy and bottom of land, but that seems ridiculous. I think I'm gonna, man. I'm pretty tempted to bottom this Coco, but probably wrong. It's pretty likely we'll find a land in four draw steps, right? In that case, it should just be the Storm Seeker, I guess. You think it's Coco, Mac? Yeah, maybe it is. Maybe I'm being too greedy keeping it. That's tough. That's tough. I don't know, man. I, I just feel like the Coco is like important, but maybe I'm wrong. We'll, we'll bottom the Coco. We'll see how it goes. Rally lead here. Go. Yep. Time for an ooze. Play this on red. Ooze. Yeah, that's fair. Mm. Assume opponent has like a decay. Oh, no, it's an informant. Okay. Well, that couldn't have gone too much better for me, to be honest. Now I just... I probably want to conserve the Beseju for now. So I, I guess the play here is probably just like... Rage... I eat your guy, rage, eat your guy for you. Have to imagine that's the play. Just start pounding away with ooze. We certainly don't want to sit here forever. That's not the game plan, so we just need to be aggressive. And I think I want to save Beseju. Ideally. So I think this is the line. For you. Go. <clears throat> It's a little unfortunate. A little unfortunate there, but I mean, we can channel this Sokens on here, I guess, and just get aggressive. I don't know. I guess that's not what I'm going to do. What if I just attack? Is that just the play? Just don't do anything? The Rending Volley is a pretty good draw there. I kind of like just leaving up all my options. I can, like, eat my own guy, hope that they don't have a removal spell, hit him for five, and that's probably the best play. Because they're repping Grizzly Salvage here, obviously. They're also just, like, repping a removal spell. But I think a safe play is do this. And... Oh, God. Yeah, they, they have priority. I'm a little worried. But they're just going to do nothing with my, my mana at the moment. Don't eat. Keep soaking on up. Trophy. That's fair. That may have been better. And get rid of the Beseju. I kind of just wanted to keep everything, though, because Beseju... Beseju gives me an answer to Chariot. I guess, I mean, we can still leave Sokanzan up. I guess I don't need to... Problem is, we're just going to lose to Chariot. They're just, like, going to play Chariot, and we're going to die to it. 
So I feel like I need to I need to hold the Viseju. It's like they just play Land Chariot, like we're just gonna die. We're just gonna lose to a 4-4 vehicle, cloning two twos every turn. So I think the play is just just pass, just do nothing. Use these both as spells. Makes the most sense to me. It might be wrong, but it's what I'm gonna do. Okay, he has no vehicles. I I think I volley this, right? I mean it's like No huge reason to not do it. It's why they're in my deck, so let's get it out of there. It's a really good draw. Um play this, give it haste, attack. Probably don't think I need to leave up Besaju here. The only reason I would need Besaju is if they had exactly can't stay away plus Rafine's Informant pitch the boat. And that's just like a perfect three cards, right? And they would need another white source to do that too. So I'm just not playing around that. I just want all my all my spells. I really like these lands to be spells if possible. God. Yeah. Yeah, that's disgusting. Okay. Not a great draw there. Play this tapped. Go. Wayfinder? Sure. Not super worried about a Wayfinder here, I don't think. Okay, nothing too dangerous in their yard at the moment. We're just going to channel the Sokens on. Okay. Combat. Attack for two. Not sure if I'm supposed to hold the Confluence there, but... Okay, so I feel like they're just... They just have a bunch of garbage in their hand. Maybe more Perihelions. That's a very good draw. Alright, combat 1U, and then play a Liberator. Okay. Yeah, that was predictable that one of those was in his hand. I'm not surprised by that at all. Okay, I guess I just need to besage you this. I think I want to keep the pressure in play for sure. So I'm going to besage you that. Gross. Okay, that's annoying, but fine, I guess. Ah, uh, yep, okay. Well, it's just a top deck war now. No can't stay aways. That was not even remotely what I wanted to draw. Play 
play it. No huge reason not to. Uh, holding the land isn't doing me very much anymore. Like, I guess it kind of incentivizes him to... Maybe he'll be, like, afraid of a Rending Volley effect or something, and he'll just, like, play a Thoughtseize. There's some argument to keep it in my hand, I guess. Jeez, dude. Come on. Ugh, man. Really, really regretting bottoming that Collected Company, the way this game went. Go. Still just gonna act like I have something. Okay. I was about to say, there's no way they race anymore. Okay, that's a pretty good one. I assume they've probably been drawing removal, but... Alright, no attacks. I just play this. Okay, never mind. He doesn't have removal, so... Not sure exactly what's in his hand here, but... Good news is my opponent's drawing as badly as I am, so... Oh my god. Apparently, no he's not. No he is not! Still gonna bluff. Just gonna do this. Go ahead. How good would a Ronus be? We need a Ronus to make these elves actually not garbage. Cleave would be good, too. Take a Cleave. These three Lanoir elves, I guess. It's just hard casting Perihelion. Yeah, that's a four to crew, right? Okay. I think it's nighttime, so it's actually a pretty good draw. Is there any difference between him being at one? And me just not. I don't have Crusher in the deck. I cut Crusher. If I had Crusher in my deck, it would be different, but I don't. I think I'd probably just put him to one either way. I don't think the one extra elf is gonna matter. I'm just don't know. I I think that's like pretty interesting. But we're we're gonna do this. Let's see what happens. He can crew his guy, he can get two bodies, but he's still dead to the board at the moment. The card he gets off this doesn't really matter. He did not hit a can't stay away. Yeah, I think we might have him. Well, now I, like, certainly have him, right? I just, like, play this, give it trample and haste and then we attack with everything could make a 1-1 one, one. doesn't none of it matters i'm just i'm just going to play this if they they get me they get me if they don't they don't i think they have something though Wow, okay. Uh, that's unbelievable, to be honest. 
I, I don't know. Are we supposed to have Bone Crusher in the deck to deal with Rafine's Informant? Like, is Love Struck just bad? Such a heavy hitter. It's like hard to hard to cut it, but maybe Love Struck's bad. I don't know. I don't think I typically like Bone Crusher against them, but kind of an awkward card, right? It just like a lot of games isn't going to get convert that well. But it might be better than Beast. I can certainly hear it. That is true. I think we just cut Storm Seekers, huh? I don't know, man. It's just like, yeah, they also have like abrupt decays and stuff and a lot of removal. We're just like, that's not a great argument, though, in this deck because they just have to kill everything. Like, all our creatures are must kills almost, especially post board. I don't know, maybe. Maybe that's... Try this, and then... So it'd be something like this. I guess if we're worried about Rafine's Informant, this is certainly the way to build it. But I, I, this card's just, like, so powerful. It's, like, it's tough, man. But I guess we'll try this. We'll see how it goes. Stormseeker was certainly not impressive in that game, so... Uh, yeah, we're gonna definitely keep this. Snap it off. Turn one, I think I'm gonna shock, unless I draw a different land, because... I really want to be able to Ember Cleave later. Okay. They took a Mulligan, which is a nice start, and not a Thoughtseize on turn one is also a nice start for me. That was not a good draw at all. Um, I gotta go ahead. All right, well, at least it's face up. We're going to see what their graveyard is here. That's big. They did not hit a Perihelion, which is huge. Okay, well, I'm just going to play a pack leader then. Um, do I offer the trade? I don't have any more 1-1s, one so I'm a little hesitant. Probably the answer is no. It needs to be on green. Let's pass here. Okay. It's a very good draw. Uh, combat, attack, Three. Sure. Play a five five. Your turn. Okay. It's a nice draw too. Uh combat five you could stomp this, I guess. Is that better than playing the Liberator? I think the Liberator is probably better. Liberator leave up volley. Makes a lot more sense to me. I'm gonna do that. This is a land. Go ahead. 
This is really nice if they have a Sky Sovereign here too, which is huge. Corrupt Decay. God dang it. They probably do have a Sky Sovereign. I don't know. Maybe not, but kind of scream Sky Sovereign to me. Yep. Yep. It's pretty, pretty garbage. Pretty annoying. That's a pretty good draw. Um... Oh. Kind of just want to take the guaranteed play and just play Elf and attack for five. And then leave up my burn. I think that makes sense. It's what I'm likely going to do. Take the guarantee. Yeah, I have no idea, Mac. I'm not sure, man. Maybe I was supposed to stomp their guy and not even let them block. Just in hindsight, probably what I was supposed to do, but... question is, do I use a stomp? But I think the answer is probably no. Just hold this for later. Oh, that's insane. I can just channel that and then attack him for seven. That is cracked how good that is. And now stomp will be lethal on the following turn. Okay. Okay. Seven, you go. <laughs> Let's go, red green, man. This is nice. We might get two five O's today with this. This is ridiculous. This deck's not even not even a staple at all, dude. Yeah, I was a sicko. You're not wrong. That top deck was ridiculous, but whatever. I mean, sometimes you. You get there, I guess. Thank God we didn't cast Coco and bottom that Sokens on, am I right? <laughs> yeah. It's a sweet deck, man. This deck is, like, really impressive for just be being a pile of cards that nobody even thinks is playable in this format. Nobody even plays any of this. Yeah, not... We're trying to recoup some of those ticks, do we? <clears throat> With Raja.deck. That Dykeman rating is only going up. Well, yeah. When we play good decks, I typically have pretty good records. But when I play nonsense that I brew up, we really tank it. But there was, a, there was a time frame when I was just, like, playing competitive stuff where you're just, like, 4 one every single league. That's where the meme about the Dykeman 5-0 came up. Just, like, can't 5-0 hardly ever, but infinity 4-1s, which is still great. Like, I would obviously take that. I'm very happy with that, but... All right, come on, opponent. We need, we need to get this last match in here. I've got actual zero work done today, but well worth it. Yeah, it's uh, it's good to hear, man. Say, it's, uh, it's been a it's been a fun time. This has been real nice. Just another thing Raja can be quite pleased about with himself about just brewing up a red green deck that I can maybe five zero twice with in the same day unheard of 
Unheard of. Oh my god, and we won a die roll. Now we're gonna keep it. There's no way we're not keeping this hand, that's for sure. Double query and beast call are kind of cool. I don't know that's actually how we're gonna sequence this game, but it's uh, pretty cool nonetheless. That's nice, Dewey. That's good to hear, man. This guy always plays aggro. Our hand's pretty good against aggro, then. Heart's Desire. Love Struck Beast, pretty darn good against aggro decks, typically. Uh, what is Sun Petal? Does that mean Niv? That probably means Niv, right? I can't imagine it means much else. Uh, regardless, I'm going to play this. Play Beast Caller. Green White Company. Uh, or humans. Really? Okay. Angels. Uh, it could be angels. Yeah, that, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. All right. You've all you've all made me eat my words about not being able to tell what else it could be. Coco angels on moto all the time. That's fair. You're right. Okay. I think. I just need to love struck beast here, right? And then attack for three. We're in trouble. This is going to be bad. Could be that sick Ligma tech, and you hate my auto mod. Don't worry. We'll let's we'll we'll put it up there. That's appropriate enough. Um, I think I want this to be red in case we top deck a cleave. A little awkward with a werewolf pack leader, though, because then I can't double spell next turn if I draw, like, an elf. But I guess I could just play another beast caller, which is acceptable. So, okay. And we're going to play Sunred. Cast this, because we know that this will 100% be able to attack next turn. Doesn't commit me into anything. Yeah, no, I mean, we're... Yeah, not being able to deal with their creature is uh, not ideal but yeah i mean we're gonna be able to hit really hard our deck hits like a truck so even with them gaining a lot of life like we are able to kind of mitigate it Looks like they might be missing a land here yeah them missing a land here is gonna be a real problem for them because now now things start to get crazy now i just like play a ronus send both my guys it's an attack for freaking nine it's like a huge hit. And then Rona starts giving things trample next turn. So just rumbling in with huge idiots. I assume they don't block. They take a thousand damage. If they miss another land, I, I think we're going to get them. I would find it very unlikely that we lose this game. Okay, so they're going to get their free attack, and they're going to play their 2-4 that gains them 8 life, I suppose. But even gaining 8 life, like, we're coming back for at minimum 13, and we can pump to make it 15, so we force a block. They must block. It's like, as good as this is, it's, like, still... Oh, I forgot that this... Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, just attack all. Right? It's like very easy attack all. I don't even think they can block this. Because I can give Trample. Tap land there's annoying, but it's not like that bad. Yeah, I'm going to attack all. They like block this on this and then put this wherever. I don't really care. Combat, attack all. They, like, cannot afford to block the 1-1. One, one. I don't think. I'm trying to... Yeah, I, I don't... I don't think they really... Okay. Uh, they're dead. <laughs> I was about to say, you can't block like that, dude. All right, you lose. Good game. I don't get it. People just keep doing this. I mean, I just, like, pump this, right? It's, like, easy pump this kill you. It's, like, let damage resolve. Deal them 12. I don't... 
People just keep forgetting what Ronus does. Kill you. Nice game. All right. That is true, Mac. I didn't even, like, look at that. But, yeah, that, that block from them was just heinous. It was just horrendous. All right, well, let's do this. <laughs> These are all coming in. This is coming in. Um, there ever a time where Stormseeker's not good, it's this matchup. Um, Domri Raid, I think I might keep here. I just like having more removal. Getting kind of low on the creature count, though, which concerns me if I keep Domri in the deck. They've got to keep Embercleave, right? Might want a Liberator. We could bring in Liberators, but, like, what? I mean, what are we cutting, right? Like, I think I'm fine with no Liberators per I mean, we could, like, yeah, I think Beast Caller is just, like, too big. We could, like, cut an Ooze for one, maybe. Cut one Coco. Yeah, I, I know we, we could do that for sure. We could also abandon the Cleave plan because I kind of just would rather be reacting to the board on the draw and then bring the Cleaves back in on the play. They have a lot of toughness, so, like, Cleave could end up being pretty bad. Interacting with their tables more important than cleaving them. And then it lets my creature count be high enough for Coco. So I think that's what I'm going to do on the draw. I don't know. That, that might be heinous. That might be completely wrong. I could see that. I could see that. Maybe the Domri just isn't good enough. I don't know. Seems important to me, but yeah, Harrison for sure. <sighs> Whatever, we'll go down to 26 creatures. I think Ooze is pretty bad. This is where we probably want to be with this. Problem is Domri Raids Plus is like a lot worse with the way we have this constructed right now too, but I mean, it's still almost a 50-50, so probably good enough. Whatever, we're just going to keep it. I, I want the fight. Want to be able to kill things. You would have played Arlen Quartz. The reason you play Domri is just like removal and it's card advantage, right? It also is like good into stomp. It's for Rakdos. I mean, it's our Rakdos slot, but oh, this hand's really good. We're keeping this all day. Oh. Now it got even better. Now I just play a Mystic. Holy smokes. All right, well, let's uh, shock ourselves. Go. They just leave the Bishop alone, right? I think we just probably leave it alone. I think we care much more about Righteous. Righteous is a lot more busted than Bishop of Wings by a huge margin. So I think the play here is going to be Werewolf Pack Leader, make a 1-1. One, one. <clears throat> It'd also be best to just simply play Kazandu Mammoth, and then next turn we can slam in for five. Kind of like that, actually. Yeah, they would have Kazandu Mammoth. Uh, we're going to play this on green. Because I already have another red source in both of these. We're going to play this on green, Timber Crown. And I'm going to Mammoth. I like hitting as hard as possible, as quick as possible in this matchup. Their life total is a huge resource. We want to keep them below 27 at all times. So this is what we're going to do. annoying, but it's fine. Um, okay. They do not have green mana yet, although they might just be hiding it from me. It's probably lurking in their hand. 
Oh, you know what? We should have brought in Liberators to deal with combo. I, I hadn't seen Mutavault in game one, so we didn't know that they were comboing, but they certainly have the combo in their deck. So we'll bring in the Liberators next game, I guess. It's unfortunate, but... Um... I guess we just shock this in. Combat. Five you. Oh, I mean, yeah, that's that's assuming I'm... Yeah, of course. I'm just saying, you know, if if we get beat by it or whatever. Not saying I think I'm even going to lose this game. I think we're in, like, pretty okay position. I think the play here is... Getting another 5-5 five five is pretty tempting. Um, taking down Rending Volley is probably wrong. I could just, like, play a 5-5. Five five. It's, like, a very real play and just, like, have a bunch of five power idiots... Play Pack Leader, Heart's Desire. Yeah, that's an option too, obviously. That attacks for significantly less damage is my concern. I kind of just like hitting as hard as possible. Yeah, I mean, I'm aware it draws cards, but I, I, I don't know that the drawing the cards is important as just like hitting them harder, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with a five-five. I, I think I'm supposed to play this, but this could be wrong. Well, you know. We're going to leave up Volley just in case something ridiculous happens here. Okay, so there's their collected company mana. We'll see if they do it right now. Okay, so I think I killed a bishop with this on the stack. No, I, I hear you. I hear you, king. I get it. I like drawing cards too, man. But uh, I think the discipline play here was just get a 5-5 five -five down. Kill that right now. You can do your Coco shenanigans. It's a horrendous collected company. All right. Okay, cool. Okay, uh, land drop. Combat. Ten you. All right, now I'm going to go double pack leader, make a 1-1. One, one. That way we'll be drawing two cards. We're hitting him like a truck. Now I value the cards more, so let's do this. Go. Okay. It's not great for me at all. Oh my god. Oh boy. Yeah. That is uh really stupid. Really, really stupid. So I think they're gonna get us this game. God dang it, Rollins. Yeah, I mean, that's why you, uh... That's why you play Angels right here. I don't even think I have any outs at all, but... I mean, we'll, uh... We'll still attack, I guess. Play this. X. Draw two cards. All right, yeah, we're never winning this game regardless, so whatever. It's fair. Cleave would have been cool. Uh, I don't even think Cleave wins this the game, though, right? I mean, I don't know. A little, little unfortunate. Opponent uh, kind of went nuts. What can you do? <laughs> Excuse me. We're on the play next game. That'll be big. God, if only we had a cleave, we'd actually uh, 
The way they blocked, I think they would actually just straight up die if we had Ember Cleave. A horrible block, but uh, we unfortunately are going to lose. So let's just go ahead and not even worry about it. I can't block any of this. Let's go to the last game here. My god, Mac, that's so absurd. That's funny. All right, on the play, I want the other cleave. Um, maybe it's just Domri. I don't know, Domri's fight, though, is like so important. I think I like having seven answers to their things. Maybe it is just trim a Coco. I just, this is tough. This is really tough. I think I might do this. Ronus. I don't think we want to cut Ronus. Ronus' trample is a huge deal. And there again, a deck that really doesn't remove anything. So Ronus is going to be able to attack. It's also the best thing in my deck to hold a cleave, right? It just has death touch. So if you cleave a Ronus, you just like assign 1-1 one, one, and then 10 or whatever. Much like uh, Questing Beast used to do in Standard. Similar idea. I also just want all of my 5-5s, five five, so Domri minus is like as good as possible. I think that's what we're going to do. I'm not certain. Maybe I should have brought in Liberator, but I, I think I just want to kill them. Let's not worry about their combo. Ah, it's unfortunate. This hand was probably good enough if this were an untapped green source, but we got a mulligan in this. This can't win. No, this one certainly can. Um, let's get rid of an elf. Let me just get rid of an elf for sure. It's pretty good to me. Yeah, it's okay. We'll take some damage from Confluence. I guess I could bottom the Rage, too. Bottoming the Rage might actually be the best, like, just way to do my thing. I'm really worried about the Elf getting Portable Hold. Or, like, bottom the other Elf. <laughs> They're just going to hope they don't have it, though. I'm just going to keep the Rage. You know what you would do? That's fair. I think I'm going to go with Elf to the bottom, but obviously a lot of options here. We could even consider bottoming the Cleave, but I think that's just the game plan here is just Cleave. Cleave the Love Struck as quick as possible. Opponent really in the tank on theirs. You would bottom the rage because screw defense. I mean, I'll hear that. And my man might be right, honestly. Like, we just have an insanely explosive start if I keep two elves, right? I just go elf, then I go elf heart's desire. Honestly, though, this might be a hand that just wants to go Elf into Lovestruck. Just don't even Heart's Desire at all. Just start attacking with a 5-5 on turn 3. And maybe if that's the case, then I just bottom an Elf. 
Yeah, for sure. I know. It's it's close. It's really close. We do have a lot of answers to things. I'm going to live dangerously. We're getting rid of that. All right, let's rock. Mana Confluence, Elf, go. Play this on red. And we're just going to play a Love Struck Beast. Go. Okay. Can't kill that one, which is annoying, but... Okay. Combat. Five, and then I'm actually just going to double elf because it lets me cleave. Could obviously just play Bone Crusher too, but then there's no guarantee I can cleave. If I just put elves all over the board, very likely I can cleave him. Puts him to very low. I like this. Go. Sure. Oh, that's really annoying. Well, at least we can stomp that and then play a Bone Crusher. It's not the end of the world. It's just bad. Well, this one's pretty straightforward. Kill this, get a 3-3, three, three, play Bone Crusher, go. Could also, I guess, Domri use the 3-3 three, three to kill the Valkyrie? Maybe that's actually better. Huh. Certainly worse with Embercleave, but it's nice to just get the Valkyrie off the table. That thing is going to be a pain. And then it lets me start plussing this. Try and hit more creatures. That's actually close. I mean, it's it's close, right? Because next turn, I just, like, if I play Bone Crusher, I just send both. And then we can cleave whatever he blocks. So this being a 2-4 doesn't necessarily matter. Huh. <sighs> oh, they, they almost certainly have Land Coco. They kept seven, right? And they, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's tough. It's really tough. Again, or settle the record. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, if they settle me, they settle me. Um, I don't know on this one. Pretty tough. This thing is going to get huge is my concern, but eh, whatever. Well, I'm, I'm going to be aggro. Certainly uh, certainly could, could be bad, but I think we just need to try and play, pay off the Ember Cleave. We're not playing Ember Cleave to not be aggressive and just try to kill our opponents with it. So I hope they don't have best possible, which would be a Coco, obviously. If they don't have a Coco, like, we're still, like, more than fine in this game. God, dude. Really 
really good hit there. It's unfortunate, but... Attack with these can cleave. I mean, I've got to do that. I've just got to attack with my stuff and cleave. At least give myself the option for that, but. No blocks. All right, well, then I guess I'm going to go Domri, kill the Righteous Valkyrie, and then play a Beast Caller here. I don't need to cleave right now at all, so just go to damage, I guess. Okay. The real question is which one's better to kill? Um, the Bishop or the Valkyrie. I mean, the Valkyrie just, like, anthems the board, right? So it's probably more dangerous, but he gets a 1-1 one -one if I kill this. I feel like this is just so much more dangerous of a card, though. I think I just have to fight this off. really hate giving him a 1-1, one -one, though, because that lets him kill the Domri, although him killing the Domri isn't necessarily the end of the world, but it's not good. It's certainly not good. Problem with Righteous Valkyrie is it gains life off of um, gains life off of clerics too. It's gonna be like worse if he has more of these specifically. The cleric, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, we'll, we'll fight the Righteous Valkyrie. All right, this kill my kill my Domery. It'll be annoying, but whatever. It's going to gain him exactly enough to kill me. Not quite lethal, but pretty dang close. Yeah, I mean, our opponent's hands, games two and three, were just like, per what is this? What? Wild. Okay. A good play? I have no idea if that was a good play, but... Uh, God, the fact that I don't have enough red to volley and cleave is frustrating. I mean, I'm just going to, like, I mean, it's just, like, easy send these. Like, I mean, it's, like, I don't even know, honestly, what I'm supposed to 100% do here. Um, if Cleave can get through for any damage, they lose their Anthem. So we just, like, need them to screw up. Um, what if I just attack all? What, is, what does that look like? Probably is wrong, but it's something to consider. At all, then they just like. Uh. I think probably would just put everything on the elves. Ten, get first strike damage. What if I just send. If I just send these three. I don't know. I really don't know. I am going to attack all. It guarantees that I get a damage here, and then they lose their anthem, which seems important. Kind of a strange line, but, I mean, if he's just blocking a bunch of elves, like, I'm fine with that. So, whatever. Combat attack all. I'm not going to think about it anymore. Juju Bean, thank you very much for the follow. Appreciate that.
Yeah, I know we don't have lethal. Well, I mean, if he says... I mean, now I just rending volley the righteous Valkyrie, right? Like, that's fine. 4, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 you. It'll just kill the righteous Valkyrie now with the with the rending volley, I think. I don't think I can afford to leave this in play. Also, this is ridiculous. Who in the world plays around Embercleave and Pioneer? It's a nonsense. But anyway. Uh, yeah, I feel like I'm just going to Rending Volley is, is garbage. So, whatever. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight. I mean, I think I can afford to wait until they make a move. We'll see. So I need to kill the Valkyrie. Oh, okay. Imagine if my opponent just would have attacked me for six last turn. We just wouldn't even be in this spot. We'd just be dead. All right. Well, I don't think I can win, but uh... yeah, I know. Inspiring overseer and pioneer. They enjoyed Streets of Capena so much that they decided to just play. Uh play this garbage in Pioneer too. Well, I think we're finally going to lose a match. We're going to go 9-1 and one with this deck today and not 5-0 a second time, unfortunately. Maybe we ran pretty poorly in this game, to be honest. Maybe I was supposed to keep that Reckless Rage that we bottomed. I don't know that it would have won the game. The... The fact that they had Apparition for the Love Struck was really what, what did it in this game. Because we would have 12 them on, like, turn 4. Uh, but unfortunately, it just didn't quite line up right for us. And they're going to get us. But uh, Well, if I play this, tag with these three. It's got to be the play. Let's do that. Not believe I have lethal, like, no matter what I do, but... Opponent's playing a deck with actual, like, zero manipulation or card draw at all and just saw three Youthfuls, a Bishop, a Double Righteous, Coco. Like, what can you do? Your draws both games two and three were ridiculous. Yep, and I can obviously Ember Cleave and then die to the youthful. So it's going to do it for my run today. Go ahead and hit up a, another stream with a raid here. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. I know it's a little earlier than normal, but I've got a, a thing I need to go to this, this afternoon. So, oh, yeah, very good showing with the deck for sure. Yeah, definitely, definitely was 